good bless happy monday morning i pray that each of you guys had an amazing bless good wonderful weekend um we had a bless wonderful good weekend as we celebrated my daughter turning the big three my little daisy um and so i'm well rested i'm healthy doing well ready and excited to share the word of uh, god with each and every one of you guys and what was uh placed on my heart and so you know um one thing that I've been thinking about uh, meditating on is um, not giving up, you know, enduring and um, um, persevering and pressing on and continuing to go forward in our walk with God. Even though uh, many trials may come our way, difficult times may come, things come to set us off course, we got to stay focused. And our main focus is staying focused on Jesus Christ and what he's called us um, to in this life. Amen. And so I wrote, don't compare yourself to others. Don't uh, keep dwelling on your past because when you compare yourself to others, you start to focus on what you don't have and what they do have and uh, what they're good at and what you're not good at. And, um, you know, in a sense, you start to covet over what others have and, and then you start to want. And so it's, it's not a good place to be to, um, you know, compare yourself to others and what others have and their walk and how they're doing. God has called you. Um, for such a time as this and for a purpose, a special purpose and a plan that he has over your life. And so love the life that God has given to you. Appreciate the life that God has given to each and every one of you guys. Um, you know, stop focusing on your past, dwelling on your past, because when we stay stuck in our past, um, that's whenever we start to allow things um, you know, such as depression, worry, fear, anxieties, addictions start to creep in. The enemy tries to hold us up, to keep us down, to tie us down by our past and past hurts and upbringings and things that have happened to us. And so, you know, in my lifetime, I've had to learn this. I can't sit there and dwell on my past and the things that happened to me, um, you know, as I was a child and growing up. I have to move forward. I have to keep uh, my eyes on the prize, the finish line, um, Jesus Christ, and focus on what he has for me amen if I want to be the mom that he has called me to be the wife that he has called me to be the daughter of the of, of him that he has called me to be the ambassador um, then I must keep my focus on Jesus Christ and Christ alone I can't keep going back to the things that make me, um, you know, feel unloved or I can't keep going back to the things that hurt me in my lifetime and dwell on those things. A lot of times what I see in, um, to this day is when we, when we focus on the past hurts and the wrongs and the things that have happened to us, that's when we fall into temptation and we start to feel ashamed or we start to feel um, depressed and we go back into old addictions that we once had that we used to use to numb ourselves. So it's not good, you know. God came... Um, to set the captives free and we're the ones that he set free amen and so we need to walk in that freedom and walk with endurance and perseverance and understand that you know he's called us to do greater things um and so let us stay focused on jesus christ the finish line the prize let us um you know let go of those past hurts and walk in forgiveness and sometimes it's not even having to forgive others that have wronged us and hurt us sometimes it's forgiving ourselves for the wrong that we may have done in our lifetime god doesn't want us to live a life of condemnation and guilt and um you know and shame that's not what he wants for us he wants us to live a life that is um yes we walk in convictions but then when we walk in that conviction when we have that conviction that is brought upon our hearts then we could bring the proper correction so he wants us to forgive ourselves and to have grace for ourselves just as we have grace for one another God so freely forgives us and gives grace and we ought to do the same for not only others but for ourselves and the things that we've done wrong again God doesn't condemn us he convicts us amen so let us not be uh, people who condemn and 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 cause all sorts of um you know um division within our relationships with other people because of that condemnation let us not be people who cause condemnation but truly truly uh walk in forgiveness and so you know i know um i'm walking this life just that, like the rest of you guys are walking this life and uh, the christian life is a difficult marathon to walk in but we're so blessed blessed in abundance that god gives us the holy spirit to walk hand in hand with us that leads us that guides us that corrects us that convicts us like i said and um you know 
know, and, and, and we're blessed to run this marathon because Jesus Christ is right by our side. His word says he will never leave us nor forsake us. So today, you know, I just really want to focus on one scripture that I have for you. And I pray that you'll spend time focusing on this scripture, meditating on this scripture and allowing it to really speak to your hearts. Good morning, Renee. Good morning, Renee. Glad to see you on this morning. And so, um, you know, the Word of God says that we're to meditate on these things day and night. And so, I pray this morning that your spiritual eyes are open to receive what it is that the Lord has for you. And you're, um, you know, you're ready to receive what it is and, and, and allow it to really minister to your hearts as it has ministered to mine. So, we're going to be in Hebrews, and I'm going to read Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. And it says, Therefore, then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance unnecessary weight so it's saying you know let us throw off all that dead weight um we don't need to carry our past hurts we don't need to carry the weight of the world and the things that we at one time must have partaken of and 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 that guilt and that shame and that unforgiveness and that um discouragement and um, whatever it is that the enemy tries to put weight on your shoulders with, put it off. Let it go. He says, let us strip off all, all of it, and throw it aside. Every encumbrance, unnecessary weight, and that is sin, which is readily, uh, definitely, and cleverly clings to and entangles us. So put off all that sin. We once were walked in habitual sin when we did not know we were children of disobedience. But now that we are uh, God's chosen children and now that we are Christians, we don't no longer walk in that disobedience. Now we put off that sin, that old dead man that was once there is put off and put to death. Amen. We are now a new creation through Christ Jesus. And so it says, and that sin which is readily clings to and entangles us and let us run with patience, endurance. And steady and active persistence, the appointed course of the race that is set before us. And I love how it says, you know, and we got to really focus on that. It says, let us run with patient endurance. You know, oftentimes we're trying to do things on our own, on our own strength, within our own might. And um, we become frustrated. And, and, and just, um, we're not, we, we, it's kind of like the Israelites. They went for 40, 40 years, round and round in circles. That's kind of what we, how we are when we keep trying to do things things on our own. When we keep carrying around that old dead sin and weight. God's saying, no, put it all off. And run with endurance, with patience, allowing uh, me to run side by side with you, getting you through this this walk, and, um, and focusing, continuing to focus on me, the finish, the finishing line, the finish prize, the the prize. Let us run with patience, endurance, and steady and active persistence. The appointed course of the race that is set before each and every one of us every single day. It's not you know just a one time thing. No, we're running a race every single day. Amen. So verse 2 says, looking away from all that will distract us from Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith, giving the first incentive for our belief and is also its finisher, bringing to the maturity of the perfection. He, for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame. And in so now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Just think of him who endured from sinners such as grievous opposition and bitter hostility against himself. Reckon upon and consider it all comparison with your current sufferings, with your trials. Think about what Jesus endured. Amen. The persecution, the spitting, the ridicule, the mocking. And yet he still stayed on course, keeping his eyes on Father God. We must also stay on course, no matter the opposition that may come our way, no matter the distractions and the sin that tries to entangle us and overtake us. We're going to put off all that dead weight and continue to run the race with Jesus Christ, knowing that he's at the finish line. Amen. Not not allowing the distractions of the world, the noise of the world, the things that come to try to set you off course to overtake us and overwhelm us and defeat us and cause depression and anxiety and so much more. Amen. 
And so the rest of verse 3 says, um, bitter hostility against himself, reckon up and consider it all comparison with your trials, so that you may not grow weary or exhausted, losing heart and relaxing and fainting in your minds. So, you know, when you start to feel, um, you know, un at ease, when you start to feel exhausted, when you start to feel worry, worrisome, and, and you're starting to feel overtaken and burdened, ask yourself, are you truly focusing on Jesus Christ and what he has for you? Are you meditating on his word day and night? Are you receiving that spiritual nourishment that you need to keep you spiritually strong and fit for the race that we have to go through each and every day, the marathon that we run as being Christians? What I wrote here is let us be well oiled, anointed with the Holy Spirit so that we may win the race, so that we are victorious always. Amen. Are there going to be times where we do go off course a little bit? Yes, but let us not become ashamed or condemned or uh, allow ourselves to keep dwelling on the, the, the little times that we get set off course. Instead, just get back on track. Ask Father God, you know what, Father, I got off track, but I ask that you forgive me and learn from it and grow from it and keep moving forward. Amen. Don't keep going back to the things that you were already delivered from or don't, you know, allow condemnation and the enemy to come in and, and keep you held down saying, you know what, you fell, you fell short, um, you know, you're, you're unworthy. You can't um, succeed because those are all lies from the enemy. You can succeed. I'm here to tell you that you are an overcomer and a conqueror through Christ Jesus. So never allow the voice of the enemy to come in and set you off course or discourage you. Be able to discern the voice of, of the enemy and be able to say, you know what, I bind you up and I cast you down back into the pit of hell where you came from. I will not receive anything that you have for me, Satan. Get under my feet because Father God gives me all power and authority not some he gives all power and authority and so stomp on his head amen a little side note says when a runner runs in a race he focuses not on the people in the stands or on the runners around him but on the finish line so let that be an example for us we must not focus on everything that is around us the noise that's around us but we must focus on the finish line as a believer your life is like a race and as you run it is important to keep your eyes fixed on jesus Give him your undivided attention all the days long. Is anything distracting you from God or keeping you from making progress as you grow in your faith? If so, we got to learn and discern what it is and then put it off. Do not allow it to distract us. Lay it at the foot of the cross and ask Jesus to remove it. What do you need to do in order to focus more fully on Jesus as you run the race of your life? Ask yourself those questions. And then I wrote, we must know that our life begins and ends with God. He is the author and the finisher, the beginning and the end. He is the alpha and he is the omega. Amen. So we must um, keep our focus on Jesus Christ and not the things of the world and the distractions of the world and the noise of the world and the discouragement of the world. Good morning, Brother Sammy. Get, glad to see you on, Nelson. Good bless morning. And so let me finish by saying the world is filled with distractions. But if we want to do what God has called us to do, and if we want to be the people that God has called us to be, we must stay focused on Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, being able to say, you know what, I'm not going to allow the worries of the world, the weight of the world, the noise around me to set me off course, to get, to bring me depression, to bring me anxiety, to bring me, um, you know, uh, worries and frustrations. But I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus Christ. We must stay focused on, de on Jesus. Be diligent to lay aside everything that may hold us back or distract us from Jesus Christ. Amen. Sometimes it's easier um, said than done, but we have to have to have to um you know put off every distraction that may keep us from um, focusing on jesus christ or keep us focused on our walk and and it is a race um that we run but we're victorious and and i uh want to encourage you guys with saying that through christ we can do all things and we are the overcomers and the conquerors and we are victors in jesus christ so i pray that this brings you guys encouragement it whatever you're going through today whatever you may be facing whatever is trying to distract you the noise of the world i i I know that during this time I have seen so many people um, with anxieties and, and, and depression and, and, and I get it. I get it because, um, you know, of the coronavirus and, and, and all that's going on around us. There is a lot of noise. There's a lot of, of, of raging storms going on around us. But, um, you know, we must also 
know and understand that it's a spiritual warfare that we're going through. And um, God says we will not fight against flesh and blood, but against the heirs and the principalities and the spiritual spheres. And so um, when we're able to um, acknowledge that, then we're able to go into battle in prayer. Amen. And we're victorious when we pray, when we're able to um, stay spiritually fit and spiritually strong. More now than ever, I believe that it's very important um, that we stay spiritually strong and not allow that depression to take root inside of us because, you know, now it's it's, an, it's a weird time. We're not able to um, come together with our families as we once did. We, the little things that we took for granted in life that are now stripped away from us. But, um, you know, I just want to let you know that if you are one who is suffering from depression during this time, you're not alone. And, um, you know, reach out and um, let us be there for one another more now than we ever have been. And let us be intentional and committed to one another and showing each other love. And I, I just want to say that you have a sister in me. And so even if you just want to reach out in text message or you know, I have messenger, I'll give you my private number, whatever. Um, allow me to pray with you and for you. And, 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 you know, don't feel that you are alone in this life. Um, you know, Jesus is always with you. And, and there's brothers and sisters in Christ all over who want to uh, be with you and share the love with you. And so, um, as I said before, I pray that this is ministered to your hearts. I do just want to add that um, I want to thank each and every one of you. I see that Brother Jacob is on, Brother Sam is on for uh, contributing to the Thanksgiving meal. We have um, received an outpouring of blessings for that meal, and God always provides. Um, he's a God of detail, and He knows exactly what we need. Good morning, Sister Maria, uh, my beautiful sister Amanda. Um, I'm so glad to see Cheryl on. I sure do miss you, Cheryl, that's for sure. Um, I pray all is well with each of you ladies this morning. Uh, Brother Sammy and Brother Jacob. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you for all that you're doing for the ministry and um, that you guys see the vision that we that we have that the Lord has placed upon our hearts. And it's only because of each and every one of you guys who stay committed to contributing to those ministries that we're able to function and operate. We're all the hands and feet of Jesus. We all come together and we uh, make it happen. So I love each and every one of you guys. I thank you guys. So if you have a special prayer request, leave it in the comment box, private message me. I'm always willing to pray up with each and every one of you guys. Uh, Sister Maria, um, I pray that your brother is doing well. Know that I have continued to lift all of you guys up in my prayers and I will continue. And so Father God, we just humbly come before you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you, Father God, that we're victorious in and through you, Father, that um, we don't have to walk um, in, in, in disobedience or we don't have to walk being distracted by the noise of the world um, and allowing that weight to overtake us or the weight of sin even in our lives, Father God. But we can lay it at the foot of the cross knowing that um, that we can be forgiven and, and that we are forgiven and that we don't have to carry the burdens or the weight of, of what we've done wrong in this life, but we can walk in, in true freedom because of you and what you did on that cross. And Father God, let us run the race, this race that we are set up, that you set upon us, Father God, this course that we are running, let us run it with perseverance and endurance, never losing focus of who you are and, and never losing focus of the finish line, the, the prize, Father God. Let us, um, you know, live this, this walk in, in being able to fulfill what it is that you have called us to do, Father God. And, and all that you have called us to do. And, and let us walk in who you've called us and shaped us and molded us to be, Father God. And, and demonstrating the love that you have for each and every one of us. Let us demonstrate that and pour it out to all those who come in contact with us, Father God. Let us be known for our love. And when people know us, they see you through us, Father God. And, and Father, let all that we do be pleasing unto you. And Father, if there's anybody out there that is... Um, with depression or anxieties or just going through a very hard time during these times. I pray, Father God, that you set them before us, that we can uplift them and encourage us, Father, that you will give us a special word to speak upon them. Father God, that they will know that they're not alone during these times. And Father, I just pray healing upon those who need healing, whether it's physical, spiritual, mental, Father God, because there's a lot of people that are suffering with mental illness right now. And Father God, I just lift them up to you and I pray that they know without a shadow of a doubt that they are not alone in this, Father God, that there are so many brothers and sisters and people all around the world who share in the same sufferings and who are also, um, you know, struggling. And so, Father God, let us be there for one another and be intentional and, and just show them the love that they need, Father God, and be there for them. And, and um, you know, be there for one another. 
And Lord Jesus, I just I lift up each and every person to asking um, for those who are um, suffering with illness or um, in any way, shape, or form have been affected from COVID, Father God. I pray healing upon them. I pray that you just wrap your loving arms around them. Um, I plead your precious blood upon them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, Father. I pray that you continue to lead us and guide us in all your ways. And Lord Jesus, keep, it, keep us encouraged on a daily. And when we start to uh, become wearisome, may we come to your word and may we find nur the spiritual nourishment and encouragement that we need from your word, Father God. And we just love you, Lord. We worship you. We honor you. We thank you for each and every day that you give to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I love you guys. I thank you um, for getting on. Brother Sammy says, keep us obedient and faithful to your word, Lord. Let us show love to one another always. Amen. Let us be there for one another. Let us be intentional with one another. Um, and most of all, you know, I think my prayer for today is that God really show us how to be there for one another not with just our words but with our actions how can we truly truly be there for one another amen and so i love you guys i thank you guys for getting on i pray that your um, day is blessed in abundance and that you have a wonderful 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 rest of your day